Hello everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel and if you are new around here my name is Elliot Baines I'm a lighting designer and I'm also a founder and director of Spiral Stage Lighting Anyway if you're a regular viewer basically as you would know uh, I would do tutorials in different parts like one tutorial about cues one tutorial about time code um, but today I'm going to be doing a, a long video maybe about an hour or so um, about uh, Everlight's Titan Bay so this is really going to be for the people who are just starting out Titan. Um, I won't be going over advanced stuff like time code and everything. It's going to be basically about what buttons do, saving the show and stuff like that really. So really the basic uh, simple stuff. Unfortunately if you're using uh, an Everlight's classic console this won't work as the console is different like a Pearl 2000, um, the classics unfortunately. But if you would like to see... Um, a, a classic uh, console tutorial like this but for the classic Avalites tutorials please let me know uh, in the comments down below I am more than happy to do something like that I have a, a Pearl 2000 uh, in the back actually so if you do want to see something like that please let me know so anyway like I said we're gonna go th through it step by step we're gonna take it slow we're not gonna go fast and uh, if you need to rewind 20 certain parts you are more than welcome to and uh, yeah so I will be going over how to record a you basic stuff like that like I said workspaces setting names and legends and everything like that so yeah so I hope you enjoy this tutorial if it does help please leave a like as it does mean more than you think and also subscribe if you do like the tutorial and you want to see more let's get on to the tutorial so like I said uh, just five minutes ago, I am going to be explaining to you uh, about Titan, all the basics, and this is really going to be for people who are just starting uh, Titan, and um, people who just want to learn it. So I'm going to go through the basics, and we're going to take uh, we're going to take it step uh, by step, and also I'm going to be showing you as well on how to like open the actual software. I know it sounds a bit weird talking about that, and really, really, really basic, um, but when you download Titan, uh, this is on the computer by the way, uh, you get three softwares, um, but if you're on a console, this first part is not really that needed um, to console users, uh, but like I said, if you're using Titan 1, uh, this first part will help. So as you can see uh, up there, there is a little box that says Titan Simulator. Now what I did for that is because you, when you download Titan, you get three pieces of uh, software. So when you type in Titan uh, in the search down in the corner, you get Titan Simulator, Titan 1 and Titan Mobile. Now Titan Simulator... Um, if you want to just play with the software without having any DMX attached, so I'm talking about uh, having uh, like no dongle attached basically, that is the software you need to use. If you want to start operating lights, um, like you know, with, with the dongle with DMX, uh, Titan 1 is your answer. So if you're using the Titan 1 dongle or something like that. Um, and then Titan Mobile. So the Titan Mobile is like a a, a cool portable te uh, a portable desk that uh, Everlights have uh, have made. So if you've got a Titan Mobile, that's the one for you to use. So for now, I'm going to choose Titan Simulator as I haven't actually got any um, lights attached. So this little box opens. It says Everlights in the corner and Titan Simulator. So you've got um, a few icons here. Uh, you've got the Sapphire, you've got the Arena, Pearl Expert, Tiger Touch, Quartz, Titan Mobile, and then you've uh, and then you've got the um, Titan One. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to click Titan One um, because I'm just going to be using the software. But if you do actually have a console, uh, this tutorial will help you anyway, uh, as it's the same software. Um, I'm using version 11.4 right now, so it, it, it doesn't really matter because it just it looks the same anyway. Um, even though Avalites have brought out version 12 and stuff like that, um, it, it, this will still help anyway. Because uh, like I said, we're going to go through the basics of the Titan software um, 
and uh, yeah. Okay, so this is the first thing you will see when you load Titan. So you get the workspace window, fixtures and groups. We'll go on to workspaces uh, in a minute. Um, then you've got sections over here, are these buttons, the keypad, the soft keys, the faders at the bottom. And um, yeah, so what we're going to talk about first is literally the basic stuff. So down here. For example, if you are on the software, these are your faders. Now you've got the flash keys, you've got the swap keys, which are really used for like programming and everything like that. And then over here, you have your page selection. So you can rather go to page one or you can go to page five. Uh, really, really simple. And then over here, we're not really going to focus on at the moment um, but this is for like queue lists and time code and everything like that and this section down here that we will talk about more in a second this is really for like programming and everything uh, so like changing uh, the position, changing the color, changing the gobo uh, and everything like that. So first off we're going to talk about this section right here uh, with the blue keys behind it. So first off you've got record. Now as everyone knows the record button is where you program stuff. So you've got these soft keys here when you click the record button. You've got record mode, you've got create memory, create chase, create cue lists, create master, tracking and set masks. Now we're not actually going to focus on these two today but we will focus on these so let's start with um, Let's start with creating a memory. Now, memory is a queue uh, on Avo. So, a queue, as everyone knows, is just a simple look, you know, uh, maybe a dimmer, maybe um, a simple position or something like that. And um, chase is basically um, a list of queues. So, it will go through the queues, you know, may you, you can change it, you know, so it's fading through the queues or if it's speeding through the queues, like really, really fast or snapping. Um, you've got queue lists, which is basically a list of queues that you can just go through when you just click the flash button. And then masters, um, that's basically, when, when I'll click that real quick, but what pops up is intensity, rate, BPM, size, pixel mapper, and scene master. So intensity is for, you know, the, the intensity, rate, and BPM is, you know, for like the effects and size and stuff like that. Um, but we will go into that maybe later on or in another video. Uh, but that is Masters. Um, and then you've also got Pixel Mapper uh, and Scene Master. Like I said, um, we won't go into this too much um, as we will be going through the basic stuff. So you've got update, um, as you can see it says no updates available um, because at the moment there is no, uh, there's nothing in the programmer at this current time. Uh, so you can't really update anything if you've got nothing in the programmer. Um, then you've got edit, um, you can edit palettes and stuff like that. I don't really use the edit button, uh, I will explain why uh, soon. Um, you've got selective, but we won't really go into that um, right now. We've got delete, uh, as everyone knows, it's just, you know, if you want to delete a queue, if you want to delete a chase or anything like that. Then you've got unfold. Now, unfold, not many people know about this feature, but what this is, is let's say you've got a queue list, and, and you just want to see all your queues laid out from the queue list. Now, what you can do is click, you know, if you've got a queue list here, click unfold, click the queue list and basically a bunch of queues will pop up here and you can just see what's going on. So I'll create a queue list real quick. So if you click record, create queue list and select one of the playbacks. So let's say here. So now I've actually selected the playback. Nothing is in the queue list yet. So if I just click the uh, swap again, it's recorded one queue as you can see at the bottom here two three four five so these are just simple blank cues and when you've done that all you need to do is click exit and then there you go and the unfold feature what it is is if you click unfold and then click swap as you can see it shows me the cues there's actually nothing on the cues um because you know I, I haven't programmed anything in but to get rid of this all you need to click again is unfold and then it will disappear 
you've got copy so let's say if you want to copy the queue list uh basically if you click copy and select the queue list uh basically select swap uh or the blue key um and then you can select any other playback um so let's just say here for now so now it has copied the queue list and obviously to delete it you just click the delete button right here click swap it will turn red and then delete playback now before we carry on actually with delete if you want to delete a fixture so on this workspace um you know you'll have all your fixtures here but let's say you want to delete a fixture what you need to do is click patch and then delete now the reason why um Avalites have done that is because uh, a lot of people um have accidentally deleted fixtures and when you delete a fixture from here that means you delete the actual patch of the fixture so that means if you've accidentally done it you need to repatch the fixture which is annoying um so that's why they've done that kind of like a safety feature if you know what i mean okay let's carry on and then we've got move now move uh, uh, you know you basically it's just moving the queue let's say if you don't like this queue list here let's say you want it over at the other end so all you need to do is click move click the blue key which is swap it'll light up red again uh, select a handle to move queue list playbacks um move play, uh, playback one so we can move this queue list let's say to the end over here so now it has moved right to the end um on playback 10 is it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah ten playbacks so now we've moved that to playback 10 now you've got include so let's say you want to maybe edit a queue maybe you just kind of want to view it or maybe you just kind of want to have the effects in that queue on the programmer now all you need to do is click include and then select a queue so let's say okay let's select q3 now the effects in q3 will now be on the programmer so let's say colors the uh, intensity everything like that will now be included and when you click include it basically brings it into the programmer so you can edit it you can maybe change an effect or something like that and uh, that's what i usually use as well to update maybe um well i don't really use it for updating i'll, uh, I'll explain in a second as well but include you can use that you know like i said to um put the effects from a queue uh onto the programmer basically so now that's done that and then you've got release sorry my phone is not on mute at the moment i apologize for that but basically let's say you have this queue list up and you've put it back down and it's lit up blue so that's not actually been released so re to release that so that's not actually lit anymore all you need to do is click release twice and then it will release everything but when you click release twice like i said it releases completely everything if you want to release just that queue list let's put it back up again all you need to do is click release click the queue list and it will release only that queue list but like i said if you click release twice it will literally release everything your cues your effects everything and i just want to make that clear then you've got patch now patching as everyone know, well as some people know if you're really really new to actually controlling lights patching is where you just put a light onto the desk let's say a moving light or a, a generic car can um you've got these soft keys here when you click patch so you've got dimmers fixtures active fixtures edit fixtures repatch fixtures export patch and patch view so dimmers is just your generic stuff so let's say you've got a par can and maybe it's in a dimmer rack so that is what that is um basically patching in uh, generic stuff that is on a dimmer rack and then you've got fixtures this is more of your intelligent range uh, like moving lights uh, stuff like that you've got active fixtures edit fixtures and repatch uh, uh, repatch fixtures export patch and patch view so if we go to patch view for a second this will show us what we've got patched in currently we've literally got nothing patched in so you've got your type fi uh, your uh, fixture types here 
you have uh, you have um, got your lines, and um, if you see here, you've got per, uh, patched fixtures, personality list, RDM, attribute editor, uh, attribute editor. I don't know why I keep saying attribute editor, att attribute editor, exchange mapping. So if we click personality list, this will show us a bunch of lights we can patch in. But you don't necessarily need to do it like this. You can do it just by clicking fixtures, and then it'll show all the fixtures on the soft keys. You don't necessarily need to use that. You've got R RDM, uh, attribute, behavior. Uh, did I say attribute editor? There you go. I'm not sure. Attribute be um, behavior and exchange mapping. But, you know, what I usually do to patch in lights is, let's say, you know, dimmer, click the dimmer, and then this pops up. Now you've got your quantity, DMX line, address, user number, legend, patch dimmers, and options. So that is your dimmers. But if you just patch in let's say so if we click exit and click fixtures let's say we want to just patch in a mega oh hang on so first off sorry one thing i didn't do is because the reason why it didn't pop up because i was going to type in a mega point here is because you need to type in the manufacturer first as it obviously says right there so all you need to do is type in the manufacturer roby mega pointer and then you've got the mods. You've got mod one and mod two. Let's say, okay, I want my mega point is in mod one. All right, and then this pops up: quantity, DMX line, address, user number, etc., etc., etc. Now, what I usually do uh, as well is like if we go to options real quick. Now, this is one of my favorite features of Everlights. Like this has to be one of my favorite features, and that is find fixture. Let's say you've got a rig of tons of mega pointers and you don't really know which one's which so if you click find fixture and you've got a, a, a like a mega point it's somewhere in the rig at address one so as you can see it's currently at address one and dmx line one the light that is on address one will turn on so it shows you where the light is without even being patched in yet and i think that's really cool so air lights that's one of my favorite features that's what i like that is amazing and then you've got quantity here so like you know let's just patch in how many uh eight mega point is let's patch in eight mega point is on dmx line one uh starting from address one user number one and legend uh legend also by the way everyone legend means name in evo so if you want to rename something it's set legend and stuff like that so let's patch in eight mega point is there we go eight mega point is have been patched so if we click uh quickly exit out of that so we've just patched in eight mega pointers. Now let's say if you want to start a new show, you've got this button here. So if you click disc, this is your, basically this is the button for all the shows. So if you want to start a new show, if you want to load a show, if you want to quick save the show, if you want to save the show, or if you want to import the show. And then there's some more options here, but we're not going to go into the other options at the moment. So let's say we want to save the show. You click save as and you can rather click the uh, internal hard drive or if you've got a memory stick attached so let's just type in a mega mega point t file and then we can just save that and that's saved the show file now what we can do is let's say if we've made a quick change all you need to do is click disk save and it'll do a quick save but you don't need to do that all you need to do to do a quick save is exit out of that and double click disk and it saved the show like that that simple and then you've got help again we're not going to go into help if you i think that's just really you know if you're stuck on something you can like read it i think it brings up a manual i'm not too sure actually i've not used it um at all the button uh, you've got system um again something that we won't go through at the moment but we will actually go on dmx settings so if we go over to dmx settings real quick this is where you will let's say if you've got a visualizer this is kind of, this is the thing to enable it so like to connect to the visualizer i did create a tutorial not long ago about connecting to the visualizer so feel free to watch that um and basically let's say if you've got a console and you've got a bunch of lines and everything like that you've got dmx a output dmx b dmx uh, C, A, B, yeah, sorry, I blanked out then for a minute, but basically that's your uh, DMX lines and universes, um, and then you've got your artnet here, 
um, Expert DMX and Visualizer DMX. Um, but you don't necessarily need to use the Visualizer DMX. You can use like the SCN or Artnet. But basically, like I said, Artnet, you know, could be maybe I'm not sure. It could be anything, any anywhere. Just like Artnet, you've got S uh, SACN, and uh, yeah, that's kind of it for the DMX settings. Um, like I said, we won't go into uh, anything else uh, on that button at the moment. Um, you've got blind. Now, what blind does is, let's say you've got a huge rig, right? And you don't want, and you need to edit a cue. Let's say you need to edit a cue, but you don't want the uh, the the programming to output to the stage. So basically, um, if you've got visualizer, what you can do is click blind and then the desk will stop outputting to the stage and only edit on the visualizer so if you wanted to edit a quick position if you want to edit it if you want to edit a queue add a queue and there's tons of people about but you don't want it to output to the stage blind is your option and then you've got off so if we click blind off again sorry and then you've got off and then you've got fan now what fan does sorry hang on a sec sorry what fan does is basically this is really for your positioning and stuff like that so let's say if you want your lights to do a simple fan out like that just click fan and then pan them and then it will do the fan um, but Ave lights have added a feature where if you click fan it'll bring up this menu now if you're on a console all you need to do is click fan but if you're on Titan 1 or Titan Simulator you need to click it then whilst you're clicking it you need to click right click and then it will stick like that so then if you click curve line you can change it to all sorts of different fanning so you can do it as a line you can do it as a mirror which is like like that I think you've got wings arrows you've got tons and tons of different fan options so that's uh, another option for positioning and uh, you've got split fan into parts uh, so basically if it's going a bit odd when you're fanning it out then you can just play with this until it's correct basically so if we click that again and there we go and then you've got update have we talked about update i think we've already yeah we've already talked about that section sorry um and then you've got options um again something we won't really need to go into at the moment now let's talk about uh, this section here now these are your soft keys now um, on if you're on an, a, an actual console you'll have buttons next to it so you can click the buttons or you can click the screen it's totally up to you um, so you've got all sorts of different um, you've uh, soft keys so you've got edit times playback options set legend shapes and effects uh, time code open workspace window and uh, wheels level now Playback options, uh, we haven't actually recorded anything in yet, I mean we've recorded a cue list but we'll make some up better in a second. You've got set legend, so you can change the name like I was saying earlier ago. So let's say you want to change the name of these fixtures, so all you need to do is click set legend, highlight all the fixtures, and then change the name to let's say MP if you want, or maybe just mega pointy. Now you can actually have a drawing in as well, so you don't necessarily need to have text. So if you click set legend again, select all the uh, mega pointies, click picture, and you can draw a little picture in. So if you want this to, you can draw a fixture, but you don't have to draw my badly drawing of a fixture. But you <laughs> you get what I mean. And also, kindly Ave lights have already offered us some um, like drawings already like symbols and everything which is quite nice of him uh, which is here so you've got like directions you've got attribute uh, attributes sorry not attributes attributes uh, beams you've got fixtures here uh, so you've got your 8 cell blinders you've got your par 64 uh, much better drawings than mine and then you've got your memory stick as well so if you've got like images of a mega point here you want to install to the console uh, that is your way to do it and then you can actually change it to an image that you've downloaded maybe off an internet or uh, a picture of your friend's face but basically yeah you can literally name it anything or add a picture to it 
Now, the other feature that I really like is Halo. Now, if we uh, quickly exit out of that, let's say if I want to make sure, like, let's say if I want to remember this fixture, I want to remember that that fixture is the light that's directly above the lead singer. So, what I can do is click Set Legend, click the light, click Halo, maybe red. So now you can see it's haloed it to be red. So you can actually color code it. So, you know, you, you can see it much better. And um, it's not all jumbled up and you're starting to get confused. But basically, if you select uh, set legend again and highlight them all, just turn them red and there you go. So that's it for set legends. And then you've got shapes and effects. But we won't go on to shapes and effects in a second. Uh, we will talk about workspaces though. So this is a workspace. You don't necessarily need to have this workspace, but you've got your workspace windows here. So you can literally have tons and tons of options uh, for a, a workspace window. So if we click groups and palettes, this is kind of the main workspace window Ave Lights have given us. Um, like I said, you don't necessarily need to have this in particular workspace. So you could just maybe have a workspace for groups so let's say we want to get rid of positions, go balls and beams and colors. Now what we can do is actually extend this by clicking this little button here, extending this out and then it will just show the groups. But let's just go back to the main section real quick and get rid of them all again. There is a faster way on doing it. If you click the settings uh, cog uh, or clog i think it's settings cog i've never really said that before but anyway <laughs> so you can rather choose top left uh top top right left right fill in the whole thing top left bottom or bottom right do i say top left again bottom left and bottom right anyway so you can actually have this fill the whole thing just like that and then we can record that by clicking it and then it'll turn red and then we can set our legend from here if you want or change it to a picture so if we just type in groups there we go it's now putting in groups but completely wrong so let's say oh, oh no you've uh, you've typed it in wrong you've typed groups in wrong and you want to change it so what you need to do is click set legend like so select the workspace and just rename it to groups there we go so there is your group button and like I said as well you can set the halo to it by setting basically uh, clicking set legend uh, select the worst bit at uh, workspace halo and then to red or maybe green or whatever and then you can also change the picture let's say if you want a picture um, if you want uh, maybe a screenshot of it and then you can change change it to that so it's totally up to you you've got tons of options there um, now one thing that people have been saying to me is like, well, not everyone, but people that don't use Avo have said to me, the one thing they don't like about Avo Lights is that you can't, ed like, you can't have your own workspace, and that's not true, because you can have your own workspace. Like, if you wanted to, you could get rid of this whole workspace. So let's say, okay, I don't want groups, I don't want positions, I don't want gobos and beams, I don't want colours. So you've got this whole thing to play with, right? This button, this soft key here, open workspace window now if you click that you've got all these t different types of workspace windows you've got active playbacks uh, attribute editor I said it right this time audio triggers capture visualizer capture visualizer settings and you've got lots more when you basically go through it so let's say okay I want a workspace with maybe a time code like a time code clock so instead of going through you can just type it in if you want so if we just type in time code for a sec maybe have the time code clock like that just on a simple clock um up a, uh, open workspace window again let's say if we want a set list uh, a set list is pretty cool that i've not there we go a set list is pretty cool uh you can basically put in you know maybe songs on there so like if you're with a band you're a tar and ld and you want to have what song's going to play next which is pretty cool um and then when you click a song it will automatically go to that page um again we won't really go into that um and then let's say okay get rid of that let's add the visualizer in 
So now if we extend extend the visualizer like so and it'll come on in a minute, there we go. That let's say, alright, I want that layout. I really want that group layout. I'm in love with that group layout. All you need to do is click one of the spare windows, name it, um maybe I don't know, time code. And there you go. Name time code. Again, if you want to change the name of that, all you need to do is click set legend, change the name, change the halo, or change the picture. So now if we exit out of that, groups and palettes we've got there we've got groups that we made and then we've also got time code that we made which is pretty cool so let's go back to groups and palettes now let me create a quick workspace that has the visualizer on it because this next thing involves the keypad because we are going to be talking about the keypad so if we so we've just done that now let's have the uh, let's put the capture visualizer in there extend it so it's only in the corner there we go i like that workspace let's just name that viz there we go visualizer so now uh let's talk about this section here which is basically one of the main parts of the console well probably the main part of the console you've got your keypad you've got locate and everything like that so first off let's select our fixtures we've selected our fixtures and uh, we want to locate them now if we click locate the lights will come on and i want to i want to tell everyone as well that locate is only for programming purposes like if you're wanting to create an intensity locate you can't do it will not record it locate it's only for like making colors and everything like that so let's say we want to create a quick position all we need to do is click highlight well, not highlight, but what highlight does is selects each individual fixture. So if we click highlight, fix plus one or fix minus one, it'll basically go through each fixture. But let's say you want to do an odd and even type scenario, you know. Click odd and even, click odd, and then it'll select the lights by odd and even. Now let's say you want to do it totally different, and you want to, let's say do a let's say maybe a one in three so like a one in three selection so if we click odd and even again one in x and then you've got this section here which says one in three one in four one in five and one in six so if we click if we click uh, one in three it'll basically select the lights one in three as you can see and then we'll click it again one in four you know and then one in five, etc., etc., etc. So let's say we want to clear that. Let's just clear that and exit. Now, obviously, as you know, exit is exit. It exits out of things. So um, you know that's really for pr uh, programming as well. But clear as well. What clear does is let's say you've got something in the programmer. Uh, all you need to do is click clear, and then it will clear the programmer uh, and if it's still blue it's still got something in there so basically click it until it's blue now the keypad now this is for like programming and code it well not necessarily coding but stuff like that really um so let me show you real quick so let's select the fixtures let's locate the fixtures and we'll still focus on this part but we'll also go to this part real quick so we've got intensity we've got our movement which is like pan and tilt, we've got colours, we've got gobos, we've got beams, uh, we have got um, effects, and we've got special, uh, I think that is. Anyway, so let's go over to colours real quick. Now, when you click colours again, it will go to a different page. So basically, if your light is like a mega point in, it's got not just a colour wheel, but maybe a CMY uh, mixing type thing and you've got an RGB maybe if you click it it will basically go through same with the gobos if you uh, select uh, G which is gobos if you go through uh, by clicking it it will go through different pages that you know the light has in the gobo section so if we go back to colors real quick um, let's click it again we've got CMY and uh, let's say we want to uh, create maybe a nice blue 
So let's record that in our colours. So it's so simple. All you need to do is click it. Let's say if you want to set a legend, but watch this. You don't need to necessarily set a legend or set a picture or anything like that. When you click it again, blue. It's already there. And let's say you want to create now a red record. Double click it, red. Let's say if you want to change it though to maybe text, you know, like I said, set legend, select it, and then type in whatever you want to type, basically. So if we exit out of that now real quick and clear so you can see now my program is cleared and uh, yeah so now if we uh, re uh, locate our lights real quick they are now back to its you know locate position so let's say we want to fade to blue in five seconds so all you need to do is click five on the keypad click blue and then it will take five seconds to go to blue maybe you want to go to two seconds into red click two click red now this feature is amazing for oh by the way sorry the reason why it's doing that is because it's titan simulator i think i'm not too sure why necessarily it does that but do not worry because it won't do that in real life i don't think um if you had a titan one dongle um but yeah so the good thing about that feature is let's say you're busking and it kind of goes to a slow song, you know. And instead of snapping into a different colour, you can just type in on the keypad maybe five seconds. And it'll slowly go to a different colour or a different position. But if you're if you're wanting to change uh, your colour on, let's say, a, a moving light that has only a colour wheel, it won't work. Because it's only got a colour wheel, so it won't actually fade. Um, so, it will work with, like, you know, positions and everything like that. But uh, colours... Uh, and gobos if it's got a color wheel it won't work if it's got a cmy or an rgb mixing thing it will work so let's clear out of that real quick now let's select the pointies again and locate there we go back to white now as you can see in this corner there's a little arrow now i'm not sure if it happens on your console as well but on consoles there I don't think there is an arrow I think it's blank on mine there isn't but I'm not sure about yours but anyway if you select the arrow or just select the corner it will come up with the attribute editor so if you select it again it will go through uh, like the pages you know and basically you have your color mixer here you've got you know green white red pink and cyan and blue and you can actually change it here as well if you want um you've got your picker which is just like that but rectangular um and you've, you've got channel which is basically this but cmy um and then you've got your filters now filters is a good feature as well uh, let's say if you're running out of ideas for colors uh, or if you want to instantly go to a warm color you know you can select warm or if you want more of a, a darkish red you know you've got tons of options here so it's like leaf filters it's like gels if you know what i mean so if you've, you've got leaf filters you've got ross colux i think ross colux i don't know uh what that says gam color i think that's right um and you know you've got lee and then basically let's say all right i want the warm white again if you like that all you need to do you select a free palette in the colors window and there you go warm white is in there now let's clear out of this now so let's go to our viz view so let's say you're on the capture visualizer but you don't want the lights to be there you want it to be in a total different position uh, on on the actual visualizer so the actual units not where it's pointing or anything like that the actual units itself so if we select mega pointers again, and uh, what we can do is I'm going to look at them because it's just easier to see. And if we click wheels level right here, if you click it, it will go through. So fade time, delay time, and visualizer. Now we're on visualizer. We can change the position. So if we click P, we can change on where I want our you know our lights to go. Uh, so you can have it like up or down. You can have it you know forward or back. Words. and you can also change the uh, uh, orientation if you want as well and rotate um, by just clicking the P again 
Um, let's say I want this fanned out. All you need to do is click fan. And it will fan out the fixtures like so. So it's all separated. And what I did there, like I said, is just clicking the fan button. And then using the positions to change them out like that. Not easy. Again, sorry, it's doing that. So now if we click clear again, locate our lights, it's easier to see. So now the next thing as well um, with uh, the section down here is it doesn't just happen with colours. But if we select P and select the corner down here, as you can see, this little plotting system comes up. So you can actually change on where you, where you want your lights to be. Um, which is awesome and this is cool as well because like you could have like one spot and you could like follow someone on the stage maybe um, And stuff like that. So you've got that you've got your go balls as well So if we click the G click it again, it will show what our go balls will look like so we can like record it onto the go ball palette We can you know record it onto like maybe here and the good thing about this is that if we quickly go back to this section Let's say, oh, okay, oh, uh, I love this gobo, for an example. If we go to groups and palettes, select a free palette, click it once so it's red, click it again, and then you can already see the gobo is there. You can see what's going to happen when you click it. So let's go back to Viz real quick. So now that's popped up. Um, that is the attribute editor as well, um, which is amazing. And then you've obviously got your zooms as well. Um, and also when you click the eye, you've also got this little dimmer as well for the fader, so you don't, for the, um, uh, intensity, so you don't actually need to use this little thing down here, if you don't want, you can just use this, which I would imagine is much easier for people on PC, or if you're on a laptop and you've got no mouse, um, because operating on a, on PC, on a laptop without a mouse is quite annoying with any software, so having this feature is amazing, so it's really easy to do. Um, let's talk about shapes and effects. Now, this is, oh, this is a good feature. Now, when we click clear, look at our lights. Now, actually, before we do that, let's quickly make a position, just a standard position. So, if we go like that, point them out, like so, tilt it down, go like that. Now, if we click picture because it's not actually going to record you know the arrows if we click picture we can record the arrows in ourselves with the little paint tool that Ave lights have supplied <coughs> supplied us sorry and you've also got the uh, pictures uh, so basically the the inbuilt pictures that you've already got so if we click direction you've got these as well so you can do straight down or you can draw your own in like I said so let's say if you just want to do Maybe a down or something like that, like so. And there you go, so easy to see, and we just know it's there. So it's like, if you're looking about, you need to select a position fast. It is there, bang, you can see it. Now let's go on to shapes and effects. So let's click shapes and effects, and then these pop up on the soft keys. You've got shape generator, you've got pixel mapper, you have a keyframe shape, and block shapes. Now let's first talk about the good old shape generator now it will come up with create edit direction and we don't really need to edit right now because we haven't actually got anything in the uh, programmer yet so let's click create and let's say okay I want to do a circle effect so if we click pan slash tilt click circle or you can just scroll through and look at all the different effects we've got it's now doing a circle now as you can see it's all doing it at the same time you've actually got these uh, keys as well these soft keys that says you know uh, adjust beat and cycles adjust speed size and spread adjust phase spread and offset and uh, yeah so if we we can change the size if we want let's say oh, we don't want it too big let's say just like that we've got our speed so we can change the speed we've got spread which we can change the spread like that or you've got phase you don't need to use spread phase is a bit more specific so if we do that it can do stuff like that which is very nice and uh, yeah it's just a bit more specific really um, but like like I said with uh, with spread which is here it's more you know 
there, if you know what I mean. Um, so, yeah. So, okay, let's say I don't want that. I know that sounds a bit weird, but if we click direction, we can change the direction that the circle goes in. So, we can reverse it if we want. We can put it back to the normal circle. Um, we can change the position, not the position, direction, so like this one maybe. Uh, you can't really see it because it's just a straight line of mega pointers, so you'll, you'll understand when you see it. And also, this is a good, this feature is also pretty good for, uh, you know, domain and stuff like that as well. So if we click record, just type in circle, like so, record, there we go, and we click clear. Now, let's go back to shape generator because I really quickly want to show you about the dimming and stuff like that. So if we click shape, uh, shapes and effects, shape generator, create, dimmer, and then you've got dimmer spread, dimmer saw, dimmer one ratio one thing. Uh, anyway, so dimmer spread is like a phase, uh, a fade, sorry. Um, you've got all these different ones that are also a snap. Um, but you you know play with it, see what you can do with it. It's really cool. All these little features. You got dimmer strobe as well. Uh, dimmer spread. Okay, let's quickly put our light back to its normal position. I don't really know why it's doing that. Let's just click clear, real quick. Sorry about that. Exit out of there. Locate our lights. Put it into our position. Now let's turn the lights off because you can see the effect much much better. So if we click shapes and effects, shape generator create dimmer dimmer spread as you can see it's now doing a fade but like i said let's say if you want to change that you know maybe change the spread you know maybe like odd and even maybe in threes or maybe you want to change the phase so like you can change the phase like that like a, like i said a bit more specific and it looks really really nice so with directions, let's say if you want it coming from the inwards, from inwards to out, so basically, all you need to do is like, let's just turn the phase up a little bit on that. If we click direction, click this here, as you can see, it's going from in to out. Let's say we want to change the speed, go over to the speed section, change the speed, change the size. Um, you can just simply do it via uh, here so you can just change the speed here or for more of a faster thing let's say if you know what the bpm of the song is gonna be uh maybe it's a, a band that said okay this is the tempo of our song and you want to do it to the tempo um basically you can use the keypad to type it in um so if you're on a key uh, on a pc you can actually use a keyboard so if we type in let's say 128 click 128 BPM tempo it will now do 128 BPM so if we record that real quick let's say uh, just call it spread for now click swap click clear and then we need to exit out of this so all you need to do is click exit and now when you select it it will do it at 128 BPM so you can, you know, change the set, you set the legend as well, like I said, you know, change the halo if you want, um, by clicking set legend, select the, um, the, uh, fader, uh, picture, halo, or anything else like that. Now, let's say you don't want it to come on that fast, let's say you want it to fade in, so all you need to do is select the, uh, the playback. And then you've got delay in, fade in, fade out, fixture overlap, uh, which we don't really need to focus on right now. Uh, curve, effect speed, uh, view cue, view shape, and view pixel effect. So let's say, okay, I want a fade in of 1. And uh, maybe a fade out of 1 as well. So if we quickly go out of that, put that on, it'll take 1 second to fade in. Let's say, let's click it again. Let's say if we want it to, let's say we want the queue to fire maybe in one second. Or, no, let's say if we want the queue to fire in three seconds. Or five, let's say five. So we'll type in five there. Delay in five, etc. that. So now if we put it up, one, two, three, four, five. Fire, and it'll fade in. That was good timing. Sorry about that. That was really cool. Anyway, so 
let's say we want to create a um let's say we want the speed of the effect so let's just turn the delay off a second because that's going to annoy me um so let's say we want the speed of that effect on the fader or the size or anything like that so what you need to do is click the playback again options fader and then you've got shape size which is fixed fader htp fader ships uh, shape and effect speed fixed or on fader so if we click on fader for the speed and uh, maybe keep it like that if we exit out of that pull that down again we'll take the fade in and fade out on zero for now to show this so if we put that up the more the fader goes up the faster the effect will go as you can see now uh, you can like I said you can also change the uh, size as well um, by clicking the p uh, fader options uh, fader and then you've got shape size um, fixed fader HTP fader um, shape and effect speed fixed or on fader so as well you've got the fader mode as well which is pretty cool so you've got timed fading you've got fading and out and fade to uh, fader and crossfade uh, which is pretty cool so if we select that on crossfade put that down a sec put the other queue so if we select the other queue a second options fader put that to crossfade which is uh, mod 3 if we put that up it's doing the circle let's put the fader up it'll crossfade so it's actually taken out the queue um, but if we put that back down and also sorry the fader is still up um, so when we put that back down the other effect will come on because they're both on crossfade and uh, that is the crossfade feature there is more on there as well so if we click it again if we go over to um, options fader You've got shape size, sorry, uh, fader mode. You've got timed fading, like I said, fading and out, fade to fader, and crossfade. So mod zero, mod one, mod two, mod three. Let's uh, exit out of that real quick. So I know I know this is going to sound pretty basic um, for um, you know because we've gone through it and this would usually be at the start, but we're going to go into this a little bit more as well. So if we uh, select mega pointer, turn that on record just put it put it dim there we go put it there clear exit there we go so if we put that up that is simply a dimmer but let's say we wanted to add a timed flash so if we click the fader again fade out let's say we want it to be one second on fading out so if you if you see that it's up it'll fade out in one second as well but if you want the flash to be, you know, with the timer as well, if you go over to options, handle, key profile to nightclub. So if we exit out of that real quick, when we uh, flash, as you can see, it'll take one second for the lights to slowly come out. So you can do this with like strobes if you want it to give it like a, a blind effect. You can do it with anything really. And uh, it is really, really cool. So the next feature as well uh, of Avalites in the shapes and effects. Uh, also, sorry, before we do that as well, you can actually enter that by clicking playback options. This is another way, selecting it. And then it comes up with this as well, which is like playback, handle, uh, fader, effects, release, and uh, stuff like that. So if we clear and exit out of that, and we quickly uh, select our lights, shapes and effects, pixel mapper create effect let's say we just want a rectangle and we'll change the width of that let's say we want it just to go to the right like that but let's move our block so it's more like that so it looks pretty cool so if we exit out that real quick as you can see it is not turning on why is it not turning on edit effect we need to click the sun so when we click the sun now as you can see 
the pixel mapper is doing its thing so this is really cool because let's say if you had like a wall of maybe buttons or something you can do some really cool effects so if you click clear out of that real quick and sorry that's happening like I said you know uh, pixel mapper create effect and if we click the add button it brings up a bunch of different shapes but you can actually install pictures in this so let's say you've got like a spiral or a logo you want to put on you know you can click the file and then you can select that and it'll just bring up a bunch of things I'm so sorry about that that was a um oh my god I'm sorry about that that is a meme I know it is and that was a meme I sent to my friend about Everlight so I apologize for that <laughs> sorry about that I've completely forgot that was on there anyway um one thing is, hang on, it's still doing that. Let's just locate them and clear out of there. Now, let's say you have got a wall of nexuses. Now, one thing you need to do to make the pixel mapper work is click shapes and effects, pixel mapper, edit group layout, and basically edit the group layout. Now, this section here, now, I don't really need to change it because my mega point is already just in a straight line. But the thing is, you need to have your lights laid out. So let's say you've, you've actually got a wall of lights, you know. You need to lay out this like the, you know, how it's already laid out in real life. Um, if, it, if you don't do that, it's not going to work. It's going to look a bit odd. So you really do need to edit the group layout. Uh, let's say, you know, have a rig. And um, it's so simple to do. All you need to do, you know, is just move, you know, lights and everything like that. But it's so simple to do. Um, but... Do that before you do the pixel mapping, but like I said, my lights are just in a line. So if your mega point is all oh, lights are just in a line on the shows, you don't necessarily need to focus on it. But I'd check it anyway. I'd double check it anyway, um, just for safe, you know, safety. So if we move that real quick, so if we click the section here, go over here, and look at the visualizer as well, we can actually see which one's which. So if we look at that. Okay, that one's that. Uh, is this one correct? Is that one there? Yeah, so that's basically correct, uh, which is good because uh, that is what we wanted. Now, the final thing I'm going to be showing you is, uh, I've kept this for last, by the way, is the good old keyframe shapes. Now, this is my favorite effect. You can't beat this. You can't beat this. It's so good. So, let's pull up our visualizer real quick. Let's select our lights, put them in a position, and go on to keyframe shape, create, and there we go. So now the lights have come on, but the thing is, it's not actually recorded that. It's not actually in the program. So when you turn on the lights, there we go, the little blue circle will pop up, uh, pop up or it will actually turn light blue, the whole thing. So we'll add that. We've added a dimmer. We'll add that at zero. There we go. So now that's all, and now I know it looks pretty basic, but you can do so much stuff with the keyframe shapes feature. So if we do that, you know, we can change the spread, we can change the phase, kind of like the shape generator, but a bit more, you know, you can do a lot more stuff. So you can just make it snap if you want by uh, just clicking this section here. Uh, you can click snap. There we go. You can snap it. And then you can do all sorts of cool stuff with it. Um, but also you can do like a snap fade. So if we um, do that, now it's doing a snap fade. And the reason why it's done that is because I've actually selected cross fade um, for when it's coming off. And then snap when it's turning on. Um, so when we change the spread of that now, let's just change that to 2. As you can see, it's doing a really, really, really nice snap fade. So, you can do tons and tons of stuff with this. So, let's say you want the lights to bounce on. And I know that sounds weird, but believe me, it's actually here. So, if you select the um, the feature the um, where you change like the snap and the fade and everything, if you click bounce, it will bounce on. You can't really see it there, but it's literally bouncing on, as you can see right there. Um, so, it's a really, really cool feature to have. Um, really cool. But also, the thing is, let's just create another keyframe shape so if we click clear real quick um let's select our pointies turn them on actually we won't turn them on yet because we've not selected keyframe shapes so all you need to do for that is click shapes and effects keyframe shape create we turn that on 
recorded off there we go now that's you know we already did that before but let's say we want to add another effect on top of that so all you need to do is click the plus button the layers let's do a color flick so blue and red so now that's doing a, a blue and red and also a fade so if we click the main uh, the, the keyframe shape title here it will edit everything so the spread on each effect so you know when you do that like look how nice that looks it looks pretty cool but let's make it look a bit more nicer so let's say we'll add a snap on here now it's just snapping out but if we add like two on here the color is going with the dimming as well so it's it's, it's reacting with the uh, intensity effects so if we change that to five it'll do that I mean look how cool that looks and you can do flying effects you can do literally almost anything but well, probably anything on the keyframe shapes editor if you play with it if you experiment if you do tons and tons of different effects you will do some awesome stuff let me show you another one so let's add another layer let's say we want the lights to be up we're like uh, up like that and then we want another one kind of down so most of you will know what I'm doing right now so if we click finish recording shapes as you can see ignore the rainbow because that was part of the glitchy thing that I did earlier ago about you know the Titan simulator and everything um, if we get rid of that real quick as well change the color to red the whole the lights we can't really do it right now um, because it's kind of glitched out because like I said it had that feature uh, where it'll it's a bit weird it'll, it, it'll um, start going random on the Titan simulator but you can see right now I've just created a flying effect but let's say you want to edit the flying effect keyframe shape sorry shapes and effects keyframe shape edit and then you can change the spread look at that and you can also change it from going inwards to outwards I'm sorry but that's awesome and you can do a lot a lot of stuff on here lot of stuff so if you enjoyed this tutorial please leave a like it really does mean a lot and it really it really means more than you think and if you could subscribe as well that would mean a lot too comment down below if you would like to see me do a version of this but on the Avalites classic console because that would be pretty cool actually that'd be pretty interesting because I'll probably learn some things uh, myself actually so if you do want to see that comment it down below and if you enjoyed like I said like share subscribe and thank you so much for watching I'll see you in the next video I'm not a